points, 34 points a game. Look at a guy like LeBron James. You add Anthony Davis on his team, and what does he do? He goes and leads the league in assists at 10 a game. I really think that James Harden, even though we're in the very beginning of the season, could lead the league in assists if he chooses to play that way. And so when you ask James, like, James, what is your goal? Sometimes it's to be the leading scorer. Sometimes it's to be the MVP. These guys that are on this tier, when you talk about Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and James Harden and LeBron James, they can adjust their game. It's all a matter about what they want to do on the basketball floor. So if you tell James, like, James, we need you to average 25 and 10 or we need to average 26 and 11, uh, he can go and do that and pretty much with ease, especially with the arsenal around him. So I, I think this was a quick message to everyone on this team, everyone in this league, that, look, they're going to be able to move the ball. They're going to be able to score. The next step that we're going to be talking about is how do they play that high-level team defense that's going to be needed when you're talking about the postseason. You know, Richard, during the game, I thought Sarah had a, a, a very poignant and simultaneously funny remark when she said, it feels like Kevin Durant is a veteran here now with all the attention on James Harden, the newcomer, and it sort of does, but you watch the performance tonight and you realize, uh, yeah, it's still new and it's still special to watch his greatness in all of its glory. I stand by this fact, especially now that you see that Kevin Durant is 100% healthy. You see that James Harden might have been embellishing maybe, uh, you know, his his conditioning and maybe his weight a little bit uh, in Houston. Ultimately, the Nets have three of the top 10 players in the NBA, in my opinion. Uh, and so when you put these three players on the court together with a, a, a varying degree of skill, right, they can all handle the ball. They can all score one-on-one. -on -one, they can all do so so many different things. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting. And one point that I will add when you have the three of them, you know the, the relationship with the media can be a bit difficult in the New York area. But when you have three superstars that are able to split the responsibility, these are something that that people don't think about. You know, it could be one day where James like, hey, guys, I got it. KD, hey, you know, hey, you guys go take a break. I got it. Kyrie, step up. is like, hey, you guys take it. Eight. So a lot of it is not just a responsibility that's going to be split over on the court, but a lot of it too is the responsibility that can be split off the court and can allow guys to kind of decompress and not have so much media attention all the time. Well, Durant, 42 points a season high, most in a game since game three of the Western Conference semifinals back on May 4th, 2019. 16 of 26 from the floor at four rebounds, five assists. He's talked about wanting to clean up the turnovers as well. He had six of them tonight. But we saw that last highlight there, Richard, where he fed Bruce Brown, who apparently has the clutch gene based on what we've seen from Bruce Brown in the fourth quarter over these last couple of weeks. But how about that, Richard? How about the way the rest of this team is able to play off of Durant and James Harden? Yeah, and, and I'm going to include a guy like Landry Shamit, and I think there's going to be a lot of attention on Jeff Green, and rightfully so. You already saw some of those smaller lineups that they were playing with where Jeff Green is at, I would say, kind of the 4-5. Kevin Durant is 7 foot. He's at the 4-5. And when you're talking about size, you're talking about James Harden at 6-6. Six, six. That could be your point guard, your two guard, your three man, whatever position that you need. So that's going to be key for them. If they're able to shore up their defense, and like I said, they don't have to be a top five defense not with this type of offense. Yes, it would be great to be a top five defense, but if they can hover somewhere between the 10 and 15 range and limit their turnovers, again, be top 10 in the league in turnovers and not 18th, not 22nd. If they could be right there at like 10 or 11, be a 10 to 15 type defense with the offensive firepower that you have on this roster, they're going to be a force. But that's going to be the number one thing, their chemistry when things get tight and their ability to play defense and not turn over the ball if they can do those two things not turn over the ball and play like solid defense i'll tell you what it is going to be problems richard's gonna hop out of retirement and put on a jersey just so he can get another ring is that, is that what i'm sensing richard no. the rant just diced through the defense on this one the authority of the throwdown when he's got the ball in his hands, it is live. And that was your Bigelow team dunk of the game. How about the Land Rover drives of the game? Uh, the Nets had an opportunity to see their new quarterback, and James Harden was dropping dimes. The get-aheads in transition, 
the ease of which he was putting it right on the spot for his teammates, leading them to some early offense buckets. And man, it was pretty on time, on target. James Harden with your Land Rover drives of the game. That wraps it up from Barkley Center. Once again, the final score, the Nets 122, the Magic 115. Join us again on Wednesday when the Nets visit the Cleveland Cavaliers. Our coverage begins at 6.30 with a pregame game time just after 7 o'clock. For Sarah Kusta, Michael Grady, our entire Yes Network crew, I'm Ian Eagle. The new look Nets get their third straight win. Ryan Richard in the postgame starts now. Thanks so much, Ian. The Nets take care of the Magic 122 to 115 the final as we welcome you to the Brooklyn Nets post game show Ryan Rucco with you live from Barkley Center joined by Richard Jefferson who is at his home in Los Angeles I mean, Richard Harden Durant we know it's a stars league and wow was their performance special tonight what stood out most to you about the win in Harden's debut congratulations Nets fans Congratulations. Uh, you, you don't know how long these moments last. You don't know when they come and when they go. But what stood out to me is that this team, when healthy, is going to be a problem. Now, do they have every single thing that is needed in order to be considered, you know, the, the favorite or a, a team that's guaranteed to go to the finals? No, they have work to do. But, boy, when I tell you that the entire league looking around seeing James Harden all of a sudden wake up and get 14 assists in his debut, you to see Kevin Durant go for 42 and this is what I like Kevin Durant is a scorer Kyrie Irving even though he is a point guard is also a scorer but what you know with James Harden is that he has led the league in assist so he knows how to get himself involved he knows how to get some teammates involved so when everyone's talking about okay well who's going to handle the ball who's going to do this I think James Harden really running that point and allowing Kyrie and KD to be just dominant scorers and him being the person that kind of navigates his game I think that could be a real problem well i mean no question about it and richard i think that was one of the things that stood out most right first few possessions out of the gate harden was all about distributing you know breaking down his performance tonight as we take a look richard what you see from james harden well, uh, again, that's what I was looking at. I was looking and I, I said the role players, and I, I, I love what Joe Harris did. I love seeing Bruce Brown, that play late in the game where it was Harden to Durant. Then all of a sudden, Durant makes the right play and throws it to a wide open Bruce Brown. Bruce, those are the guys that have to knock down shots when you look at championship teams. It's the Bruce Brown. It's the Joe Harris because you know the stars are going to get attention. And with James Harden, Kyrie, these are guys that entire defenses – a team spends their entire practice and, and, and focus, how do we stop James Harden? How do we stop Kevin Durant? When they were on individual teams, now you have all three of them on the same team. It's going to be nearly impossible. They are going to be getting more single coverage than they have ever had. For Kevin Durant, a guy that played with the Splash Brothers, now all of a sudden he's got the uh, a very, very similar spacing because you have so many quality players. And James Harden, again, it just goes down to his assist. His assists are the things that are going to make this team run. Well, 32 points, 14 assists, 12 rebounds. You add in four steals as well. Did have nine turnovers. And I like that that was one of the first things he brought up to Michael Grady in his post-game interview saying, ah, I got to clean up the turnovers. But, Richard, I, I think what was so striking, and we've already talked about it some, was, you know, people have seen James Harden play a certain way in Houston over the last couple of years. And so there have been conversations about, oh, you know, dribbling the air out of the basketball. How are they going to continue to get everyone involved? But – these players wanted this, which obviously shows their inclination to want to do whatever they have to to win. And James Harden has shown that ability to play make. And it's not just that he has the skills to do it, Richard. There's the buy-in now to not play the way he was in Houston and to access more of those playmaking abilities. And we saw that already in game one. Ryan, I 100% agree with you. What you have to do is you have to look around the league sometimes. And James Harden has led the league in assists. And then as his team and the dynamic of his team started to change, he then started to be like, okay, 